Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, Mirko asked me to talk about multi-stakeholder governance, and I would love to talk about uh, chickens and pigs. And I hope uh, that makes sense. Do we have my present? Yeah, actually we do. I don't see it here. Um, so I would like to start with um, in a real knowledge from the one area where I, where I know things best, and that's the Open Wallet Foundation. And one thing that we learned early on is that companies care about digital wallets. You know, when you think about Apple or Google or Samsung or a lot of innovative startups, a lot of companies really care about digital wallets. But so do countries. I'm not sure if you've seen Paolo's talk about the EUDI wallet initiative, um, but you know, the European Union clearly cares about digital wallets. They're spending over 26 million on the EUDI reference code alone. So this is one of those areas where governments and companies both care. And so we had faced this dilemma from the get-go of how do we create a partnership between countries and companies? Because if we don't, a lot of skepticism abounds. I've been part of a meeting with a very large tech company and a fairly large government, a European government, and the tech company basically came in and said, we figured this out. You don't need to do anything. Here is the credential format. Here is the code. Here are the specifications. This is what you do. Relax, sit back, enjoy the ride. We know exactly what to do. And as you can, <laughs> you laugh, Annie. And this is exactly what they did. They said, this is not how things work here. We tell you what to do. And I think there is a real danger that both sides are missing out. On the one hand, no one knows the mobile operating systems better than the companies that are producing those operating systems. No one knows a Samsung smartphone better than Samsung. But no one is going to issue your driver's licenses or your passports in 20 years other than your government. So I think we really need both at the table. So let me come back to the chicken and the pig. This is a story I heard a long time ago about how not to partner, how not to do a joint venture. And, and the idea here is that the chicken goes to the pig and says, people love ham and eggs. We should partner, you know, because we're going to be so successful if we work together. Let's, let's create a joint venture. And the pig is not really thinking and says, yeah, sure, that seems like a good idea. You're right, people love ham and eggs. And the chicken comes with an egg and says, pig, your turn. And the pig goes like, oh. <laughs> so the, the point I'm trying to make here is, not all partnerships are mutually beneficial. And the question is, how do we create a true partnership, a partnership that feels like it's actually a good partnership to both the chicken and the pig? And I'm not saying that the governments are the chicken or the pig, or we as companies are the chicken or the pig, but I hope you, you catch my drift here. And when you look at the space today, what's interesting is that, um, do you hear me like this as well? Or do you need to, okay. So when, when you look at the existing space, what's interesting is that you have basically two models. When you go to, let's start with the Linux Foundation. You know, a lot of governments are part of Linux Foundation projects. And at Open Wallet, we've been really serious about trying to get governments to join the Open Wallet Foundation. We created a governmental advisory council modeled after ICANN. And uh, we've been very specific from the get-go that if we want to do this right, we need governments at the table. But ultimately, governments are the guests. This is, I assume most of you here are from companies. This is our party. Companies at the end of the day are on the board of the Linux Foundation and they decide the fate of the Linux Foundation, not governments. And if the Linux Foundation or our premier members would decide tomorrow to kick out 
the governments. And to abolish the governmental advisory council, well, then there would be no room for governments. So it's our party, and we invite guests to join our party. And when you talk to the ITU, the International Telecommunications Union, they will say that this is a multi-stakeholder event. Because the ITU has 1,000 private sector members, 1,000. Lots of large companies, Google and Verizon, and many, many companies are part of the ITU. But when they're going to elect a successor to Doreen, the Secretary General of ITU, no one will ask Huawei, which is a member, or Google, which is a member. It will be up to 193 member states who will decide who the next sec gen of the ITU is going to be. This is a public party. And of course, we as companies can be guests at a public party. So we were thinking, how can we do this better? How can we create something where we don't communicate to governments that they are guests at our party, or where we are as private companies, where we are guests at their party? And this is what we announced. We announced this about three months ago, and it's I think, correct me, the first partnership between the Linux Foundation and the United Nations. I think it's the first partnership between any open source organization and the United Nations. And I'm incredibly excited about it. Because when you think about it, if five companies want to work together on code, what do they do? They go to the Linux Foundation. If countries want to work together on anything, the most likely place they go to is the United Nations. In a way, we as Linux Foundation are the United Nations for companies. Or, to put it differently, they are the Linux Foundation for countries. <laughs> so in my view, it is absolutely logical to create a partnership between the world's largest open source organization and the world's largest organization for countries to work together. And this is what we announced uh, on May the 28th at WESIS, the World Symposium on the Information Society. The Secretary General of the ITU, uh, Jim uh, from the Linux Foundation, and uh, the responsible minister in Switzerland, which is the hosting country of WESIS, the world's the, the, the largest tech conference of the United Nations, we announced to launch the Open Wallet Forum. So what is the Open Wallet Forum? Well, this is a sneak peek, so please keep this to yourself because we will formally unveil this on October the 1st, but I wanted to give you an idea of what to expect. So let's start on the right-hand side for those of you who are not familiar with the Open Wallet Foundation. This is something we started one and a half years ago, and you will recognize all of it, right? It's hosted at the Linux Foundation. Uh, the Linux Foundation, I think, is now at 950 projects almost. So this, you know, every time I present this, we need to update it because the Linux Foundation is growing so fast. Um, it's amazing. You know, over 2,000 members, over 900,000 contributors, approaching a million contributors. It's amazing. It's a flywheel. It's, it's something truly incredible. And the Open Wallet Foundation is trying to create a safe space First and foremost, for developers, for all of you if you're developing code. To bring developers together, you don't have to worry as much about uh, IPR, you don't have to worry as much about antitrust, lots of best practices. The Linux Foundation practically wrote the book on this. Importantly, the Open Wallet Foundation does not publish standards, and we don't do wallets. And at that point, many people say, so what do you do? <laughs> you don't care about standards, you don't you know, work on wallets, what is it that you're doing? So the analogy we use is actually the browser space. Every browser is based on standards. Google told me over 700 standards and counting. You know, anything from HTTP, HTML, JavaScript, you know it. And then you have on top of the standards, of course, you have the actual browsers. You have Google Chrome, and Microsoft Edge, and the Chromium browser, and the Samsung Internet browser. But what's interesting, all of those browsers are using the same open source code base, something called Blink, which is part of the Chromium project. So think of Open Wallet Foundation as trying to create Blink for wallets. Not the standards, not the actual wallets, 
but the open source components that are underneath. And uh, we've just uh, agreed, the TAC agreed on three more projects. So now we have 18 code projects and we believe we're going to be at 25 at the end of the year, fingers crossed. And we're really stoked about this. There is a lot in the pipeline. There is a lot more code coming in. We believe Open Wallet is definitely going to be the place for wallet developers to come together. Whatever credential format, whatever protocol, this is the place if you want to work together with others on wallet code. So that's the Open Wallet Foundation. Now, the Open Wallet Forum is something that is really new. And as you can see, the uh, Governmental Coordination Committee is going to be hosted at the ITU as the only tech-focused UN agency. So rather than San Francisco and the US, this is going to be in Geneva. Uh, 193 countries plus the European Union, so 194 members. And the idea is also to create a safe space, but a slightly different safe space. This is a safe space for governments to align, to come together, to speak with each other. And the beautiful thing is those 193 member states don't have to sign up. They are already signed up. They just have to show up. We just have to convince them to be part of the conversation because they're already there. So we think they're an amazing partner. And just like we don't publish standards or create wallets on the foundation side, we are not going to make policy decisions or trying to influence standards on the left side either. We're trying to bring everyone together to discuss which standard are you using and why. Why are we using a different standard? Is there a way to work together? Can we bring those wallets together to have a digital reality that is where we are today. Today you can use your driver's license anywhere you want. You can come to China, you can come to the US or to you know, France or any place in the world and you can show your driver's license and you can show your passport. And the goal is basically to do the same thing. But if you think of those things as driving forces, let's say they are horses in front of a carriage, one thing is really important. It's better to have two horses than one if you want to carry a big load. But you need to make sure that you don't have one horse going to the left and one horse going to the right. So we're really working hard to tie these initiatives together. I'll work on both, the forum and the foundation. Brian, our CTO, will work on both. Ruth, who has been handling the Governmental uh, Advisory Council, will work on both to make sure that those are two sides of the same coin. And we'll have a lot of activities, as I'm not sure you can see here, probably not. I'll go over them, a couple of them. So the first one is going to happen in January at the World Economic Forum. We were um, really lucky and grateful that the Swiss Minister of Justice and Police, who's responsible for the Swiss wallet, invited to a meeting already this year at the WEF. And we'll continue to do that next year, but together with Doreen, together with the SecGen of the ITU. <coughs> And the idea is to bring as many ministers and CEOs together as possible to agree on one thing, and that is global interoperability is a goal worth having. Not on a timeline, not on credential formats or protocols, um, but the basic goal. Is interoperability something that makes sense? Is this something we want as a society? And we hope that we're going to get to a point where in Davos there is going to be a pledge and a lot of governments and a lot of companies are going to come together and say, yes, this is what we want. Now, as the name high level suggests, this is uh, you know, going to be something not predominantly for developers, but really for the decision makers, both on the public and the private side. We just try to take advantage of the fact that so many governments and so many important companies are in Davos at the same time. But the main event is here in the middle. It's a conference which we are going to launch in Geneva. And the idea is to bring as many developers, governments, companies from as many use cases as possible together. Whether you care about crypto wallets or identity, healthcare or, or travel, doesn't matter. The idea is to bring really everyone together um, and show concrete cases where the public sector and the private sector are working together. The Niski Consortium and the European Union and Google, which contributed code to the reference code. Very unusual bedfellows. If I'm not mistaken, I think the EU is suing Google at the moment. 
but it doesn't mean that they cannot work together on code for wallets because we share, all of them share, this idea that this should be digital public infrastructure really with an aim to help people, not to monetize the wallet, but to help people. Um, or, you know, for instance, Apple and the California DMV. Or, uh, you know, Canada, uh, uh, provinces in Canada working with Indicio, for instance, on their wallet code. So there are a lot of different opportunities and examples around the world of governments and companies working together side by side. And our hope is we can actually make that even better. And one last thing, we announced a neutral code repository that any developer from any country in the world can access because it's under the jurisdiction of the United Nations. The only way to block access to that code repository is going to be if the United Nations impose sanctions against the country. But no individual country is going to be able to impose those sanctions because it's going to be under UNICC jurisdiction. So this is essentially what we think a partnership could look like. And we are really excited about where this could go if the world's largest open source community and the place in the world for governments to work together are starting to do something. So that's a very quick overview of Open Wallet Foundation and Open Wallet Forum. And uh, I'm not sure if we have time for questions. Probably not. Do it afterwards. Very good. Thank you.